Welcome back. In this lecture, you will learn how to specify the boundary conditions to evaluate the temperature of each PV layer. Okay, now we will depend on the test conditions which are labeled in the back of the PV panel. Thus, our simulation is considered a 70 watt generated power at 1000 watt per meter square incident solar radiation at 25 degrees Celsius ambient temperature. Also, the absorption, transmission, and reflection of the surfaces ETFEVA and monocrystalline are all taken from the reference thermal behavior of monocrystalline silicon solar cells for Pavlovich. So, let us now open the answers and apply these conditions uh, depending on these specifications. Okay, we will now open the setup. And do you know, uh, the, the arrangement will be the ETFE layer, EVA, EVA layer, monocrystalline silicon cells, and another EVA layer, also a PET layer or tape, maybe, uh, a PET layer, tape, and the CFRP layer. We will see these, uh, these values, how, how it be calculated, uh, but just starting, uh, starting the boundary conditions, the setting of the steady state thermal analysis. Okay. Now this is our PV panel. So at first, the initial temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. And what we have? This is the first layer, which is the ETFE layer. And we know that at the ETFE layer, a 10% of the incident solar radiation is absorbed by this layer. So 10% from 1000 watt per meter square will be equal 100 watt per meter square. Also there is 7% will be reflected. So this is an optical loses. The 7% of 1000, it will be equal to 70 watt per meter square. So now at the ETFE layer, there is 100 watt per meter square absorbed and 70 watt reflected. We will not set any boundary condition for the reflected, but we just set a boundary condition for the absorbed heat flux. What we will do is right click on the steady state thermal, insert, heat flux, and we will specify the face of ETFE layer. Then we will set a 100 watts per meter square. Okay. Now, at the EVA layer, we assume that it is a fully transparent. So there is no absorption, there is no reflection, all of the remained flux, which will be equal to 800 at 30 watts per meter square, will be um, incident on the silicon cell. But at the silicon cell, there is a reflectivity, which is equal to 3%. So 3% from 830 watt per meter square will equal approximately 25 watt per meter square. So, now this is the first boundary condition. We will hit the ETFE layer. Now this is the EVA layer. And for the EVA layer, 
there will be an absorb and a reflected heat flux reflected heat flux from the monocrystalline silicon cell which will be three percent we calculate the three percent and we found it's equal 25 volt per meter square this is reflected from the silicon cell to the eva so as a boundary condition it will be 25 liter flux on the eva layer okay now you can name these boundary conditions so this is the heat heat flux on eva1 and this is the heat flux on the etfe layer okay again at the uh, at the monocrystalline uh, silicon cells now what we what is remained it is 830 minus 25 so now it is 805 watts per meter square this is the remained heat flux but there is also a generated heat flux a generated power we see in the presentation that the generated uh, power from this panel is equal to 70 watt we will divide it this value on the surface area of the silicon cells to obtain the generated heat flux so let us see how we can do this we will go to answers to the geometry yes now what we will have we will hit all other bodies and what remains is just the silicon cells we will use the tools analysis tools entity information and we will click on this surface we will found that this surface has a surface area which is equal to 0 0.01468 meters square so the overall surface area will be equal to 0.01468 multiplied by the total number of silicon cells is 36 and this is the total area of the total surface area of the PV uh, of the silicon cells now we have 70 watts divided on the surface area so it will be equal to uh, 132 and the remaining heat of flux it is 805 minus the answer and that's it so the heat of flux on the PV panel the remaining heat flux on the PV panel will equal to uh, 672.5 or 73 so now we will go to set this as a boundary condition so now set the body and we will select all these surfaces okay. 
set a heat flux and we say it's 673 that's the heat flux here okay show all bodies also what we have we have a radiation here a radiation loses so we will insert a radiation uh, the emissivity Uh, the emissivity, let us see what's the emissivity of these um, of the ETFE I think it's considered in this research as 0.89 maybe uh, let us see So, okay, it is chosen as 0.89, uh, the emissivity. So, what we will do is we will set this value here. And we will also set a radiation boundary condition 0.89. From the CFRP layer radiation CFRP and this is the radiation on ETFE also we have a convection loses and we will set uh, this convection loses depending on the Microsoft Excel calculator um, I um, explain it and I show it to you it's a, in the previous lecture but let us see how we will set the convection the film coefficient from the upper convection I will set it as a parameter here and also I will set another convection here that's also as a parameter okay now you can find the Microsoft Excel calculator in the resources of the previous lecture now what we will do we will define this calculator here in the answers so edit file browse this is the convection coefficient calculator okay this is it double click but right click open file in Excel okay now what we will set the wind velocity is 1 the ambient temperature is 25 and we will set the collector specifications the length is equal to 1.153 and the width it's equal to 0 0.518 and the slope we will consider we will consider this panel as a horizontal and we will assume that the surface temperature is uh, 50 degrees Celsius and we can correct this assumption uh, later when we found the the computational temperature so now these are 
the mixed convection coefficients from the upper layer and the bottom layer and these are defined look these are defined as h bottom and h upper so that's it we will save this these changes close the excel and we will right click here on the arrow and click update that's it now we will double click on the analysis and we will put these as input parameters okay what we'll do we will go to the parameter set and we have here the steady state thermal analysis we have convection film coefficient p1 and we will set it equal sorry double click here and this is will be h upper the first one we selected is for the upper surface and the second one for the bottom surface so p1 will be equal to p4 from the excel sheet and p2 will be equal to p3 for the bottom p3 okay so what's the wrong here no no sorry without the equal sign yes it's equal to p3 that's it and now we can return to the setup and see if the answers get these values from the excel sheet okay So you can see now here the boundary conditions that we have two boundary conditions convection one and it's taken the value from the excel sheet also convection two take the value from the excel sheet and that's it these are all the boundary conditions on the pv panel now you can go to the solution direct thanks for your watching and see you in the next lecture